break shall come. No more clouds in the sky. Thank you for joining us today uh, here at Messiah Baptist Church and our YouTube ministries. Uh, last week we were unable to broadcast, and I know some of you have wondered what happened. It's just uh, my daughter, who helps me, had been on vacation, and this week we're back doing our ministry again. And thank you for joining us. Uh, we are finishing Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 7 today where Solomon offers, and he's been offering some very good advice, and uh, one thing he tells us uh, is that learning is very important. And he teaches us that a wise man or a woman never ceases to learn, that only the fool thinks he already know it all. But one of the things that he emphasizes uh, for us to do is to consistently learn the Word of God. Fill our hearts and our minds with the Word of God. Uh, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? And then he says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The Word of God helps to direct our lives. The Word of God will help us to find uh, the will of God for our life. And the Word of God will help us to follow uh, our Lord. Uh, so let's get started today in Ecclesiastes chapter 7. And we're going to begin reading in chapter 19 where Solomon teaches us the importance of gaining wisdom. Uh, Wisdom is um, it's a gift, but if we gain wisdom, if we want to continue to grow in that, we've got to work at it. It just doesn't happen uh, automatically. We need to work at growing in uh, wisdom, uh, both with God and man. Let's look at Ecclesiastes chapter 7, beginning in verse 19, and I'm going to read to the end of the chapter. It's Ecclesiastes chapter 7, beginning in verse 19. He says, Wisdom strengtheneth the wise more than ten mighty men which are in the city. I want to take just a moment to say something about that verse. Uh, you don't necessarily have to be involved in the... Uh, politics of your city to have a very powerful influence in your city. A good man and a wise man, according to what Solomon teaches in that one verse, can have more influence in their city for good than um, the mayor uh, of that city or the city council. Just one good man who has good judgment and common sense, a godly man, can have great influence, or godly man or woman, can have great influence in their community without being involved in the politics. And I just want to say that to you because I, I want you to know how important uh, you really are in your community if you're trying to live a good moral life. And that's what Solomon is saying in that verse. You 
can have more influence than your mayor. Verse 20. For there is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Simply, there are no perfect men or women. Also take no heed unto all words that are spoken, lest thou hear thy servant curse thee. For oftentimes also thine own heart knoweth that thou thyself likewise hast cursed others. All this have I proved by wisdom. I said, I will be wise, but it was far from me. That which is far off and exceeding deep, who can find it out? I applied mine heart to know and to search and to speak out wisdom and the reason of things and to know the wickedness of folly, even foolishness and madness. And I find more bitter uh, than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets and her hands as bands. Whoso pleaseth God shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by her. Very good advice, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. Behold, this have I found, saith the preacher. The preacher is uh, Solomon. Uh, I said, Behold, this have I found, saith the preacher, counting one by one to find out the account, which yet my soul seeketh, but I find not one. One man of a thousand have I found, that's one-tenth of one percent of all the men that I have interviewed and talked. But a woman among all those have I not found. Lo, this only have I found, that God hath made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. Solomon is teaching in this portion of scripture uh, that a wise man never ceases to learn that only a fool or a rebel thinks they already know it all. And he teaches this, to be wise is better than being rich. But he said, Sometimes it's very hard to be wise all the time. But it is better to be wise than it is to be rich. Because if you're wise, you know how to handle your riches if, in fact, you acquire them. <clears throat> Don't be a busybody about another man's business. He says, mind your own business. Take care of your own household. You certainly should be praying for others, but don't always get involved in someone else's business. Um, he warns us about that. Take care of your own business. Take care of your own household. And... This is a piece of advice that I think is very interesting. He warns us not to listen in on other people's conversations. The reason, he says, you might hear something that you wish you had never heard. And sometimes, if you're a busybody about another man's business, you hear things you wish you hadn't heard, and sometimes you see things that you wish you had never seen. Uh, so, the admonition is, be very careful about the words that you say, because others may be listening in on your conversations. And this is an admonition here, just from Brother Paul. Make your words sweet because someday you may have to eat them. And be careful about what you say, because somehow a little bird will carry your words. I remember as a boy growing up, and I'd get in trouble at school, 
sometime before I even got home or sometime uh, not long after I got home, my mother seemed to know uh, what was going on and how I got in trouble or what I'd done or if I skipped school or if I had gotten a fight or something in school and somehow she would already know. And I remember asking her one time, how did you know, Mom? And my mom would say something like this, a little birdie told me. Now, I know she didn't know that Solomon had talked about that in the book of Ecclesiastes. It's just something that she heard. And sometimes our words uh, are scattered. Uh, we speak them in secret, and still somehow they get out. And one of the hardest things to do is to have someone want to come to you and talk to you in private and then for them to ask you never to mention anything they say to anyone. That's a very difficult request and very hard to do. But if you have that ability to listen without being a gossip, uh, you're a great asset to the work of the Lord. Because people need to be able to speak what's in their heart. Our main person we should be talking to, of course, is the Lord. Uh, but be careful about uh, saying too much. Because a little birdie somehow will carry it through the palace. Uh, even Solomon warns that when you say things in secret... Even the walls have ears. So be very careful about what you say. This is something I learned a few years ago. Some of you probably already know this. But it has to do with the words that we say. And it has to do with our communication that we are all involved with every day uh, in this day and time. And that is this, that every message that you text over your phone, even though you erase it, it can always be found, which is very interesting. Uh, you think that when you erase a text message that it's gone, but in fact, they, uh, by technology, they can find that text message no matter how old it is. So be careful about what you say, even in private. Solomon tells us this, a word that is spoken is like an arrow that is shot. It will not stop until it hits its mark. <clears throat> so choose your words wisely. Proverbs 25 and verse 11 says, A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. Um, good advice needs to be given at the right time. Next, Solomon warns his sons of the prostitute, the woman of the street. He says that uh, they are like a trap. In fact, the trap that they set is worse than death itself. And I said to myself, Solomon, he, that's interesting. If any man ought to know about women... It should be Solomon. And I would listen to his advice. In 1 Kings chapter 11 and verse 3, 1 Kings 11 verse 3, it is recorded that Solomon had 700 wives and 300 concubines. And concubines are uh, performed the same duties as a wife, only they are of a lesser um, uh, equality in the home. But he talks about the evil woman, 
the ungodly woman, the immoral woman. And he says, she lays a trap or a snare that the end is worse than death. She can put a blot on the name of a good man. She hunts for the good life. She longs for real love, but she never finds it. And when she's finished, she just wipes her mouth and goes and hunts for the next victim. He says to his son, If you will only follow God, you'll be able to stay out of that trap. And in the end, you'll be glad. Like the story of Joseph, when he was bought and sold into slavery, and he was sold into Potiphar's house, he escaped the trap that Potiphar's wife had set. And in the long haul of life, we see that God uh, lifted Joseph up to a great authority because he could be trusted. In verses 27 and 28 of this chapter, Solomon said, I have met a lot of people in my life, and certainly he did. He met a lot of educated people. He even helped to build colleges and universities and schools uh, for the young people to be taught and trained. So he met a lot of people, educated and uneducated. But he made this observation. He said, out of all the people that he met, only about one-tenth of one percent of all the men that he ever talked to or interviewed had wisdom. And then he said later, he said, even less, I found wisdom in women. And I thought, well, remind me of what uh, Forrest Gump said. That's all I've got to say about that. I'll not get into it. Finally, Solomon believes that God is the creator of man. That God has made man in his own image. Greater than we ever could imagine, God created us. Everything that God created has its own beauty. Um, and through it all, the, the, the planets in the universe, the stars all throughout the galaxy, uh, all the things here on earth, the trees, uh, the beauty of the rivers and the mountains, and the beauty of all those things and, and the wonder of it all, God still chose mankind to express his love and to love and to be loved. We were made in his own image. We were made to walk upright. For we are not an animal. We are God's creation. But as we know, man turned away from God. But God offers restoration. He offers reconciliation. We call it salvation. Mankind, apart from God, is headed in a downward direction. Every man and every woman must make a conscious decision to turn around. Jesus is the one who said, follow me. The Bible says, all we like sheep have gone, have gone astray, and every man has turned to his own way. We are instructed, love not the world, 
neither the things that are in the world. And I thought, that's very, very difficult to carry out. Because there are things in this world that we love and we enjoy. And so I think that what is meant when he says to love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, I believe he's teaching us this lesson. Don't love anything or anyone more than you love God. God must be our priority in life. He is the first uh, and most important relationship that we can have in this life. We must stop letting the world influence us. And uh, we live in the world, but we're not to be like the world. We must learn to be strong in the things of the Lord. We are the ones who should be influencing the world, not the world influencing us. And again, that's a very difficult thing to do, but we that's the way God intends for us to live. And let me tell you, that is a good way to live. That is a blessed way to live. Uh, if you want to have God's blessings, just follow the Lord. Follow His way. We must not change our way of living. We must not change our thoughts. We must not change to fit into the world. The world must change to come back into the kingdom of God. We are to live a life that honors Christ. We are to live what we've already learned from Solomon, a well-balanced Christian life. If we do, it will honor him, and it will br bring us blessings. These are lessons that he teaches us. They're very powerful, and they are life-changing. Next week, in chapter 8, we're going to be looking at a view of life from God's perspective. And of course, we find that written in his word. God bless you until we meet next week. I shall see.